So I hope that you enjoy World Cup so far as I told you earlier. I'm George Kubusis and today we're going to talk about optimizing a WordPress web server. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm sharing a few key facts regarding me, just in case you find them interesting. There are also some contact information in the in the left side, so you can contact me later or catch me in the in the break or just send me a personal message if you're shy or whatever. I hope that we will have enough time for questions at the end of the presentation. In case we run out of time, you can always cut me outside. Okay, so this is the appendix of the presentation. It's separated in three chapters. Uh, it's actually uh, our way of troubleshooting things. Uh, we need first to uh, realize the common stack problems, uh, the problems that come with a default installation of a WordPress web server and uh, then we have to go on in understanding and analyzing the special needs of this stack and then we should apply the optimum solutions <coughs> so uh, this presentation has an intermediate level it's not an amateur one, it's not an advanced one but uh, I'll be happy to answer your, your questions even if uh, they are based in amateur level or advanced one uh, but let's let's stick please to intermediate level and uh, have uh, all questions uh, analyzed based on these slides. Uh, I have some assumptions for this presentation. And, uh, the assumptions are that you already have a WordPress web server installed. We won't learn how to install a WordPress a WordPress web server from scratch because this is kind of outside of scope of the presentation. So, I do assume that uh, you already have your stack installed there, but you, you do have it at the default uh, stage. So, we're going to optimize the stack in order to behave super fast. Uh, okay, let's focus uh, on the technical part and uh, let's start this and uh, realize the common stack problems. The problems that uh, they do exist in the common uh, installation of WordPress under a default uh, uh, a default WordPress installation uh, of the server. Uh, it's a LAMP or LNMP. Uh, there are a few uh, things in the resources and uh, we actually need to be sure that uh, we don't limit ourselves. Uh, things like uh, shared hosting or related are limiting ourselves. We can uh, always uh, apply some optimization there in shared hosting but uh, actually as we or our special needs grow, we will need dedicated resources. And uh, you will need dedicated resources in order to get super fast. You can apply some plugins or do some optimizations in self hosting, but these are not enough. These uh, can be done in plugins level. So these are not the optimum solutions for this, uh, for going super fast with WordPress. And uh, actually, there's. Oh, <laughs> This was my. <laughs> okay, sorry for that. Uh, we'll speak about the technologies. Uh, you need to have the optimal software applied. This is a common issue. Uh, just because when we are under dedicated resources, uh, we don't have efficient manage, uh, efficient time to manage or efficient uh, knowledge to manage our staff. So we. I'm not uh, really sure about the optimum software that uh, needs to be applied or we don't have the time to manage or we don't have the knowledge to manage it. So we need to go uh, under a managed plan. We need to have a, a, level, a level 4, level 3 engineer there, a DevOps engineer, in order to actively maintain and, up -to -date and keep up to date all uh, technologies that are involved in our WordPress websites, web server. Uh, so don't self, don't set yourself on restrictions. Uh, we don't want self hosting for this for this uh, uh, optimization because we we might have uh, some uh, uh, problematic neighbor or things that uh, will lead to false benchmarking. So we need to be sure 
about uh, our installations and we don't want to be underserved. And uh, there is uh, another, uh, another issue, it's um, actually stuck to CMS level and uh, it's uh, just because uh, WordPress as every other CMS uses PHP and MySQL so all these things are kind of heavy, they do a lot of queries and uh, they need great time to respond back. Let's, let's understand the needs. What happens when you call a single WordPress website URL? It's actually a request that gets from your browser, gets out to the server and it responds back. And uh, this request has to be fast. And it has to be fast because uh, the faster the better. Everything is going fast nowadays, from user experience to SEO. Everything should be should be fast because of the user. You need to take care of the user. You need to be in users uh, in user seat and uh, realize if you have a, a, web, a WordPress website that reacts fast and gives a better user experience than a slow one. So uh, we need to take care of this uh, of this request of this request. Sorry, uh, we need to optimize things so they get back uh, the faster. They get back faster uh, than uh, the default installation. So in order to do this, we will analyze the roadmap of a browser request. A browser request starts from users level. It comes from your browser when you type a WordPress website URL and you hit enter. This request goes straight to the web server of the, of the hosted website. And uh, in order to be passed back, it needs to involve many technologies there. It needs to contact your CMS and your CMS might need to contact your PHP and your MySQL, which are, <laughs> which are big pains for this and uh, should be optimized in order to get a, a faster response back. So, uh, we need to, to make sure that uh, we apply some technologies in these levels in order to get them fast. And this is a roadmap of a cast browser request. This is what we're gonna do. This is uh, uh, what we call the, the hero state. Uh, we need to we actually need to apply uh, casting solutions between the, the web server and your CMS. We need to apply an HTTP cache solution. You can use uh, things like Varnish, so services uh, that run outside of the CMS, but you can actually use services that run inside the CMS level, which, uh, which, which, not, which uh, they are not the optimum solution because they will use the dropping of a WordPress in order to cast things, but there's still a, it's still a solution. You can you can also do that in case you are limited in services level. Uh, so once you you apply an HTTP cast, you will get responses back, and you will get responses back without being served directly from PHP, without being regenerated. So you will uh, have a uh, you. Will you probably have noticed that uh, once you type a WordPress website URL uh, that is not changed for, for months or, or something on your website, it uh, gets heavy and uh, it needs more time to get back. Uh, so applying an HTTP cache will cache your issues and uh, will get a response back to your, to your uh, browser without the uh, need to regenerate uh, through PHP. Uh, so, stack on this and uh, make sure that we apply a proper HTTP cache solution. WordPress needs also to contact MySQL for several queries. It needs to contact it in order to respond back for almost every, every request. So, we will have to also apply there an object cache uh, which actually WordPress is, is using an uh, object cache, but uh, since it's not persistent, uh, it's kind of useless. Every time that uh, 
you enter a, a, a URL in your browser, you get a response back that is generating some queries to the MySQL and MySQL response back in order to get the response back delivered to your local browser. And uh, WordPress is uh, doing some kind of cache by default, but uh, since it's not, it's not persistent, it's getting uh, cleared every time my PHP process is uh, being stopped. So we need to, to add an object cache there in order to cache uh, all these requests using a dropping that uh, uh, WordPress offers for this, uh, for this object cache. Uh, so this way you will have uh, also the, the queries cast and uh, you will get you get back a super fast response by doing so so uh, let's uh, analyze everything we talked about HTTP cast that you can apply there uh, we talked about the object cast and uh, we talked uh, about uh, solutions that are offered in, as a service in uh, the dedicated resources, but you can also apply solutions uh, as a plugin directly to your CMS level, which will be kind of slower, but still it's a solution. Uh, you can uh, reduce the requests forwarded to PHP uh, so you don't get regenerates and avoid bottlenecks here. And uh, you can also do some extra stuff that uh, are not mentioned here. It's kind of uh, uh, casting PHP on uh, code levels, applying opcast or related technologies, uh, adding HTTP slash two protocols in order to maximize requests. And uh, there are a few things, a few other things like. Uh, uh, do, uh, keeping things up to date, keeping uh, your MySQL up to date, keeping your PHP, le PHP version up to date using the latest technologies uh, so you are super fast and uh, you are always up to date in order to provide more efficient speed. Okay, uh, let's move to questions. I left much time for this. <laughs> you can always contact me using my personal information in case you want to. Any questions? <laughs> so you mentioned that you can do caching within CMS to a plugin or outside. Mm -hmm. So the solutions outside the plugin, what are the options? There are actually a lot of options there. Or what should we look for if we're choosing an option? Uh, what we look for is uh, to have a tested solution there, a solution that uh, simply works for WordPress, a solution that is tested on WordPress. And uh, this actually needs uh, much technical background that we applied. It's not something that the uh, end user can always do. And it depends on your level. It actually depends on your level. If, you, if you're not familiar with technical stuff, it's better to hire uh, some guys to do that, uh, that usually offer managed hosting, uh, you know, uh, that are experienced level 4 engineers, level 3 or whatever. So it's, uh, you cannot say, you can say that uh, there are a few trusted solutions, but you cannot say which will, which will work better because every website has its own needs. And as these special needs grow, uh, you may need to apply another solution that works better for you. And how could you analyze these needs to, to propose a solution? What, which, uh, what do you look on the website when you analyze uh, its uh, well, actually, issues? Uh, this is this one is the default state of every WordPress installation. Yes. It comes and comes. Uh, it includes uh, only uh, cars, a temporary cars in the MySQL level. And uh, 
this uh, cast, as I already said, is being removed. Uh, actually, every upon every PHP process termination, it gets wiped. So uh, we don't actually want that. We want to cast as much uh, content as we can. We want to serve as much static content as we can because every PHP application that uses MySQL is kind of heavy. Even if you are uh, applying this, the latest technologies and you have a super fast server, by default it's not enough. You need to optimize it. So it's, uh, you need to analyze uh, what your WordPress website is doing. A news website is not the same like a corporate one. You need to take care of the, of the traffic, you need to take care of the uh, slow queries. Uh, there, are many, there are many things that uh, you need to take care of. So, uh, you do analyze uh, things based on um, based on your needs and on your website needs. But uh, this is a, uh, a generic rule. You need to apply an HTTP cache and you need to apply an object cache in order to make PHP regenerate, terminate it, and in order to make uh, WordPress not to be uh, dependent on the MySQL in order to regenerate queries upon every single page view. And do you have specific tools you recommend for analyzing uh, the needs of the WordPress sites? Oh, well, I'd recommend uh, you can apply varnish as an HTTP because it's a very good tool. Uh, and for all the cast you can apply Redis or Memcast. They are pretty used, widely used solutions that uh, work for sure. What's the name? Uh, get to cast, it's memcast and Redis. Redis is widely used even by Twitter. It's a technology that replaces memcast or kind of replacing. Uh, memcast was used for years and uh, it's proven that it, do, it does a very good job. Uh, you can also apply an opcast in HTTP cast uh, which uh, will cast things uh, on code level. It's big code but that's an option, I think. It comes with, uh, uh, it usually comes with PHP, so if you are running PHP at its latest, uh, let's say, latest version, you will have a great podcast uh, version in order to be enabled, to, so you can compare things with it or without it. It may generate some issues to you, because uh, you need uh, to analyze these special needs that we earlier talked about. Okay, any other questions? Yes, please. And you talked about, uh, a lot about cache. How do you work in validate cache? How do you know if cache is output? You want to validate cache? Yeah, but how do you know that the cache is outdated? Is, is that, sorry, sorry. If something okay. changes on your database, for example. Yes, you how actually you have to that's a, that's a special need I talked about earlier. You need to understand where where you can apply CAS, and you need to make sure that you apply CAS uh, wherever it's possible, but uh, it's useful. So we need to make exclusions. You probably need to make uh, some books during uh, uh, an edit of a post or something uh, in order to serve always the latest version, but if uh, actually you need to always serve as static as you can, but uh, this is not an option when you update a post, for example, because let's uh, let's imagine that I I am editing a post and uh, I need to provide the latest version to the reader, and the reader visits it, visits the post, and uh, it gets a previous version. Okay, he gets a cast version, but it's not useful, it's not our case. So you need to make exclusions and you need to make sure that it fits uh, in specific website parts. But uh, in some cases, you might need to uh, involve yourself in it. It's not a plug and play solution at all. Okay, any others? So just piggybacking on that that's last question. So mm -hmm. then, if, if the if it's an outdated page, mm -hmm. what, where do you look to know that it's outdated? Actually, you can see the headers of the, <coughs> the headers of the 
of the web page and you need to see if uh, the content was served uh, using a, a, a cache means or a cache hit. A cache hit, is, uh, a cache hit means that it gets uh, served through the cache. So in the browser? Yes, it's, it's actually on the development tools. So you need to oh. press uh, depending on the. <laughs> yes, it's usually F12. You use Chrome, for example, okay. and you need to analyze the uh, the road uh, the roadmap of the, the tree of the loading times. It will help you uh, in order to understand the headers, and uh, you will get uh, many useful information uh, from this part. Not only about the cars, you will get some uh, header things that uh, you may need to uh, to to provide uh, in order to debug things or whatever. Okay, guys, we're fine. No, we're fine. Okay, thank you.